Hi everybody, this is Cat Fleece. I'm going to go over an axonal terminal and the three major ions that play a role at the level of the axonal terminal along with their concentration gradients, their ion channels and the direction in which these ions travel. First of all, there are three major ions that we need to um, talk about and that is First of all, sodium. Sodium has a much higher concentration on the outside of any cell. It doesn't matter what cell type we're looking at compared to the inside. So the way we can show the gradient is by uh, making the brackets um, indicating concentration of a particular particle uh, making the brackets bigger on the outside of the cell compared to the inside. For potassium, we see that the concentration gradient is much higher on the inside of any cell. Again, this doesn't matter what cell we're looking at compared to the outside. And finally, for calcium, we see that calcium has a similar concentration gradient, as in it's much higher on the outside compared to the inside. Okay. Now all cell membranes, it doesn't matter what kind of a cell we're looking at, are going to be characterized by leakage channels. And leakage channels are always open. So I'm going to use the purple uh, color um, showing two lines indicating that these are open gates at all time and I will call these leakage channels. And so we find those everywhere um, throughout our axonal terminal. And I'm just going to indicate a few. If we now indicate the direction of um, movement through these leakage channels, for each one of our ions, then we see that sodium will pass through these leakage channels along its concentration gradient, so into our cell, similar principle for calcium. And of course, potassium would follow its concentration gradient by moving out of the cell. So this happens constantly. This is always going on in any uh, cell type. It doesn't matter whether it's an excitable cell or not. In addition to that, there are always going to be pumps, ion pumps. And so let me draw a few pumps. Uh, let's add one more here. Mm, it's going to get a little crowded here very fast. So we're going to be looking at, for if we focus on just these three ions, sodium, potassium, and calcium, then we have calcium pumps, and we have a pump that allows for the passage of both sodium and potassium. And by the way, you guys, sodium and potassium only have one positive charge Calcium, on the other hand, has two positive charges. So let me uh, write these out one more time. So it's sodium has one positive charge, potassium has one positive charge, calcium, on the other hand, has two positive charges. And please do not modify these. Um, these are the worldwide accepted abbreviations for these ions. Okay, if we go back to our Pumps, remember that pumps require uh, the use of ATP. So we see ATP hydrolysis occurring, and the ATP hydrolysis is what provides the energy to literally pump our ions against their concentration gradient. So in our examples here, in the case of calcium, since calcium has a higher concentration on the outside compared to the inside, we will see that calcium is going to be pumped via this calcium pump back into the extracellular material. 
for sodium and potassium or the sodium and potassium pump since sodium is highest on the outside we see that sodium is going to be pushed into the extracellular material on the other hand uh, potassium is going to be pushed or pumped into the cell where its concentration is the highest and in the case of the sodium potassium pump we see that um, per ATP molecule two potassium ions are pumped and three sodium ions are pumped. Okay, now since clearly axonal terminals have the ability to become become excitable as is indicated by the arrival of this axonal terminal you know by now from learning muscle physiology that these cells are excitable and therefore they must also have voltage gated ion channels so let's use another color let's use orange or let's use hot pink let's do that and um, let's use the letter V to indicate voltage gated ion channels so I'll just call them short voltage channels so they are going to be present throughout the membrane again of this axonal terminal and what kinds of voltage gated ion channels are we going to see well first of all the only way that an action potential could propagate is via the help of sodium voltage gated ion channels as well as potassium voltage gated ion channels let me squeeze in one more so that I can indicate the direction in which the ions move now now all of these voltage gated ion channels are passive channels so when they open sodium is going to move into the cell potassium is going to move out of the cell when an action potential arrives at the axonal terminal we also learned that calcium voltage gated channels are going to be stimulated to open up so calcium once again will follow its concentration gradient and move into our axonal terminal and once it does that um, it's going to set up a series of reactions that ultimately lead to exocytosis of our synaptic vesicles so this again is an overview of the major ion channels that we find in an axonal terminal there may at times also be chemically gated ion channels and later on when we learn more about neurophysiology I will better explain to you why this may be the case at this point in time with your knowledge of muscle physiology you should be able to understand all of this information um, so I'm hoping that this little lecture has helped you understand these three questions that you should be able to address ion gradients ion channels and the directions of the ions through these channels